Hi, this is David McCam for WebTNG. This video is a first look at a free WordPress security plugin called Fluent Auth. This is a new plugin from the Manage Ninja team, the same people who develop Fluent Forms, Fluent CRM, Fluent Support, Fluent SMTP, and other top tier solutions. Some people may wonder why they need a security plugin. But taking care of site security is one of the first things you need to do when a site goes live on the internet. There are hackers and bots that watch for new sites and within a short period of time start attacking, looking for a weakness. Maybe you have an e-commerce site, a membership site, or a site for your business and so obviously you cannot afford to have it hacked. But suppose you have a simple site or a site that's new. You may think there's nothing of interest. However, you'd be wrong. If your site is compromised, then it can be used to infect visitors to the site with malware. A hack site can also be used as part of an automated botnet to attack other people's websites, and you don't want that. So if the site's online, it needs to be secured. So first, we're going to do a walkthrough so you can see what the Fluent Auth plugin offers, and then we'll have some discussion and conclusions. If you like the video, please subscribe. It helps us spread the word about the channel. Here's the Fluent Auth plugin on the WordPress plugin directory. You can see it's brand new, has fewer than 10 active installs. Here it has a list of the main features. There's email-based two-factor authentication, magic login, that's where they send you a login link, social login, limit login attempts, dynamic login redirects, audit logs, some security enhancements, some email notifications, and it's fast. And we'll walk through and take a look at these just a moment. Here we are on the Fluent Auth website. Here it has some information about those features. It also has some help, a getting started article, how to do login logout redirects, register login shortcodes, and configure login with GitHub, which is their first social login. So here I have a new test site with a 2023 theme. There are no plugins installed yet. Let's add Fluent Auth, and it's all one word, F-L-U-E-N-T-A-U-T-H. And I'm going to click Install and activate. Okay, so I'm gonna click to go, and here is the settings page. And you'll notice there's this apply recommended settings option here. So I'm gonna click that, and that gives us the settings that the team recommends. Let's just run through those real quickly. The core security settings, it disables XML RPC, so that's remote procedure call, and that's used by very few plugins anymore. It's not used very much anymore at all. And then this is application login via REST API. It could be that there are some plugins that need this, but if there are, you would know it. And in most cases, it's safe to turn this off. And then this option disables user enumeration using the REST API. So it's usually safe to turn this off also. And that helps to protect the user names to make it harder for brute force attacks. Then we have the login security settings. So you'll want to have this turned on. And you may have seen something like this, the brute force limit login attempts in other security plugins. So you can set the number of tries they get and the time frame for the number of tries. And then this is magic login. If you enable this, then you can set the roles that you want to offer it for and all the roles on the site are listed here. And if you do that, then the user is emailed a link to log in, okay, instead of using a password. And then this is for two-factor authentication. And in this case, the user is emailed a code to enter, and you can turn on the roles for that as well. Then this is a maintenance thing, how many days you want to keep the logs for. So I'll put that down to say 10. And then send an email notification if any of the following user roles log in. And so if you had an LMS site or something, you might want to know when the instructor logs in or when students log in or things like that. 
and also to send an email notification when a user gets blocked. This is the default email address, but you can delete it and enter other email addresses here if you want. So I'm going to click Save. And these are the settings that you would want to use on pretty much every site. Like it says, kind of core security. Okay, but there are some other features here now. One of those is social login. You can set it up to allow users to log in with GitHub, with their GitHub credentials, and then log in with Google credentials, you know, like if they have Gmail or whatever. That's coming soon, but that will be the next social login option. And then I think they plan to add more as well. Then you have another feature. And what this is, is it gives you short codes you can use to place the login related forms on pages that you choose in your site, which would be nice for say a membership site or something like that. This is the full login sequence options, you know, a login form. If you don't have a login, then register, or if you lost your password, then submit a password reset. Okay, so that's that short code. This one is just for the registration option. And this one is only for the login form and this only for password reset. So you have kind of granular control on those. And you'll notice that there's also this option. There's a parameter that you can add to the short code, which is redirect to. And these redirections, this is another feature of Fluent Auth. Here you can set that after the user logs in or completes the registration or the password reset, you know, you can customize and override the WordPress default in these cases. Okay. And then the last group of features here is these are some login redirect settings that you can create. You can have a default. So after the person logs in, what page do they land on? And the same for after they log out. So you can have a default and change it from the WordPress default. And then this is a cool part of this feature is in addition to the defaults, you can add customized rules. Here you can select a user role or a user capability. And so then you can customize the redirect on login or log out based on user role or based on user capability. Okay, so user capability, those are the fine grained permissions that each user role has. So you can have kind of a different set of login redirections for each user role. Okay, and so that's what this feature is. Then there are two other pages here. One is there's a log page. You can filter by failed, block successful, or search for a particular user. And there's a dashboard that gives an overview of recent failed and blocked logins and successful logins and then kind of a summary of which settings you've enabled. Now I want to show you really quickly what a couple of the emails look like. So this is what the login looks like when you have two-factor authentication turned on. I've already entered my email address and now it's waiting for me to enter the login code from the email. So let's look at the email. Let's see, this is what the email looks like. And it gives you the login code in the subject line, which is nice. It makes it a little faster to pick it up. But basically, I'm just going to copy this back here and paste it in. And we're logged in. So that's what the two-factor authentication looks like. And now just so you can have a look at it, this is what the login success email looks like that's sent to the admin. That's the walkthrough of the options that we have with Fluent Auth in this first version. Now for some discussion and conclusions. The Manage Ninja team has a number of websites, you know, one for each of their products. And the Fluent Auth plugin was created for use on their own sites. 
So that's good news because that means in the speak of software developers that they're eating their own dog food, <laughs> or in other words, they're using their own plugin on their websites. So it's gotten some polish and some real world use on some busy websites before it was offered in the WordPress plugin directory. Now, when we walk through the different setting screens, I notice that there are four sets of related features. The first is that there's the brute force login protection of the login form, as well as the options to disable XML RPC and the REST API application login. Also the ability to disable user enumeration via the REST API. Now these are features that pretty much every WordPress site needs. The second feature is the option to allow logins using credentials from other popular social network websites. This is a nice convenience for users because it cuts down on the number of logins that the user has to keep track of. Currently, it's only possible to add GitHub as an option, but authentication using your Google login is coming soon. The third feature is the ability to use short codes to place the login related forms where you want to put them. And for each of those types of forms, you can have a custom login redirect or log out redirect option. So you can control the page the user goes to after those actions. The fourth feature is the ability to set a default redirect and the ability to customize the redirect URLs by user role or user capabilities. So from a high level, those are the features that are currently available. Now the Fluent Auth plugin doesn't include every possible security option that's out there that you may have seen in other security plugins. I think the idea was to stay focused and lean. My understanding is that the plans for the future are first to add more social login options and add more options for redirects. Things like redirect based on a fluent CRM tag, a particular course the user might be enrolled in, or maybe based on a WooCommerce product purchase. So that's kind of the discussion. And now these are my conclusions. The first conclusion is that the brute force login protection is something that pretty much every site will need. But the other features are ones that you need and would be useful on sites with multiple users logging in, like an e-commerce shop, an education course, website, or a membership site. And so you can use the plugin just for brute force login and leave the other features turned off. But this group of features together makes it pretty clear that the focus of Fluent Auth is for use on sites with multiple users. It seems to be tailored for that. And so finally, I think this is a new plugin, but I believe they're going to be developing it rapidly. And since it's coming from the Manage Ninja team, we can trust that the plugin is well coded. They have a good reputation and a lot of talent. So if you have a site with multiple users and you want these types of features, then Fluent Auth is going to be a good plugin to check out. So that's my walkthrough and first look at Fluent Auth. There's a text version of the video available on the WebTNG website, along with other walkthroughs, reviews, and resources. Hope you found this video useful. Thank you for watching.